after both of my um, kids' birth, I ended up very sick. And, you know, it wasn't because I was um, low income or that I didn't have access to health care or I didn't do prenatal, um, you know, appointments or anything like that. It was just, there's just a, the, you know, there's the, so many African-American women find themselves um, in harm's way after labor and delivery. Welcome to this special Mother's Day edition of What is Black podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Jacqueline Duchet, and we'll be joined by special guests Nicole Peltier-Lewis and Veronica Lowe. We'll talk about issues of Black maternal mortality and other health issues concerning Black women, as well as reflections on being Black moms and how we can support ourselves to be the best that we can be. So let's get started with the show. We're all here. So Veronica, I wanted to introduce you um, to Nicole. Nicole, um, Veronica. Hello, Veronica. How are you? I'm I'm great. How are you, Nicole? Great. Happy pre-Mother's Day. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Same to you. Thank you. (laughs) So Nicole and I were just talking about she, you know, she was mentioning um, just the issues that just black moms in general face, especially some of the health concerns that have now kind of kind of risen to the forefront in terms of either black mortality, black mother, black maternal mortality, or just some of the health issues impacting black moms. And I was just sharing that um, I think just a few weeks ago, actually. Um, one of the, the one of the new congresswomen, Lauren Underwood. She passed a bill or or was, was one of the co-authors of a bill to sort of a mm-hmm. death, um, maternal, preventing maternal deaths act. Okay. I think my thing is that she has a, her, one of her friends, I don't, know if, I don't know if you all heard about it in the news, um, this woman, she, you know, very successful woman, um, scientist, worked, with the, worked for the Centers for Disease Control. Yes. And she passed away from complication, post, postnatal complications. Wow. I did hear about that. I did. I did not. Wow. And so, you know, she's, she's an example of, you know, I think she, she had said that, you know, there were some complaints that she had and maybe, you know, maybe it, it wasn't taken seriously, you know, seriously by docs or mm-hmm. maybe not, you know, I just say probably not taking it seriously with the doctor right. and then. She ended up passing away. I don't know. She had pre. She had. She had. Yeah. She had a few few complications. Right. Right. The birth of her um, of her child. So it's just kind of kind of tragic and sad. And she's such an accomplished woman, and by all you know, very educated, and should have you know done well. But you know, the data show that even despite that, you know, they're African American mm-hmm. who still. Right, and even um, stars like Serena Williams has had mm-hmm. um, complications after childbirth. Um, so right. it, it happens to um, African Americans um, in, in spite of uh, economics, you know, in, in mm-hmm. spite exactly. of, of prenatal treatment. Um, you know, it, it, that's what's so scary about it. it, it mm-hmm. I when I was um, when I looked into it, because I also have um, suffered from um, complications. Um, Post delivery, and with okay. that, and with that, um, I mean, so, you know, life changing um, complications, and mm-hmm. um, but without any having any prior health issues or anything that you would um, would you know bring forth any type of um, red lights or you know, um, mm-hmm. call, you know, well, you know, I wasn't. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? I was in high risk, you know, and um, to see some of the things that uh, happen to professional women um, after delivery, it, it is it's it's very scary. And um, so from from having the baby, just going through the process of you know having childbirth, you know, black motherhood is all is already um, a different experience than than uh, than others. Right. Yeah, we had a um, health fair yesterday, and one of the things that the lady talked about, um, one of the professionals, was colon cancer and, you know, the proper screening. And, you know, we always say age 50, but she talked about even at 45. And it was funny because um, I guess women – have more um, colon cancer than men. And I said, well, that's surprising because you hear um, more men 
you always hear about men having colon cancer. And they said it's because women get checked more frequently. You know, they, they go to their checkups usually like they're supposed to. And, but men tend to not. So when they do find out, they're usually so far gone or they're, you know, stage four or five, where right. women, you know, they catch it early enough that they can um, – the mortality rate isn't as high, but um, it, it was that was really interesting to me. But right. yeah, there's so, lot. There are so many uh, medical conditions that um, impact African American women disproportionately mm-hmm. than other groups. Yeah, you know, and um, mm-hmm. and I think just the day to day stress level that African American <laughs> mothers face. Uh, yeah. You know, lead to a lot of the um, the problems that we face medically. You know. Um, mm-hmm. You know, well, and, I, mm-hmm. and I agree with you. I think and it's not just the stress level, but we don't take care of ourselves. You know, we're sick. We don't feel good, but we've got this and we've got that. And, you know, we put everything before our, our health. Absolutely. It's interesting. I went to a conference the other day um, for um, parents of children with autism, and mm-hmm. it was really eye-opening because I served on a parent panel, and um, but there was another panel that was all was really based solely on self-care. And so when they opened the floor to the parents, out of the 15 questions that were asked, maybe one question was about self-care. Every other question dealt with how can I be a better mother, a better parent to my child with this special need, and how do I get the resources and services that would help them to be successful? Only one person out of the 15 questions actually said, you know, how do I balance taking care of myself? How do I make time to uh, take a bubble bath? How do I, you know, take time to spend time with friends and to decompress? And I think that's what happens in our com- in, with with moms all the time is that you're, there's always something on the plate that you feel should have you know give have more attention than just you um, and what your needs are. But you know mm-hmm. we don't take that oxygen you know like the airplane you know put the oxygen mask on first before you try <laughs> right. to put on someone else's. We don't we don't do that because we're right. you know, full speed ahead. I have to be the Great superhero example. in this. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I started. I started pressing the record button because you all had already started like a great conversation. But I just wanted to um, to ask you when th- this issue of self care. Why do you think that's the case? I, that I really think that's the example. Yeah, I think it's an awesome question. I think one part of it is that it's the example that is set from generation to generation, right? <laughs> okay. Um, you look at your grandmother, did she, you know, how did she practice mm-hmm. self-care? You know, your mother, mm-hmm. did she practice self-care? Like what was, you know, what were, what are our examples of self-care? Oh, yeah. So many of us grew up in um, in households where, you know, we're, you know, we're dealing with maybe low income or we're dealing with, you know, families trying to make it with two jobs. We're seeing our moms you know, be that person who's doing the traditional roles that we still are, consi- you know, considered mom roles, right? The laundry, mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. all those things right, that we don't right. get paid for, right? All those, right. <laughs> you know, uh, making sure that everyone's schedule is, is, is happening. Everyone's going to soccer on time and, uh, you know, they're making it to their saxophone lessons and all that. Mm-hmm. And then we're also um, working as professionals, you know, trying to – climb the corporate ladder. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, our example of women who just, you know, really just, mm-hmm. you know, tighten their belts and, and just keep moving, not really um, taking real care of themselves is what we're used to seeing in our community. Well, and, I, you know, you, you started hitting on something that really made my, my mind start um, going because... I think you guys are probably a little bit younger than me, but um, my mom and my grandmother never talked about health issues. It was, they always, you know, they seemed to be fine. They never had ailments. They just didn't talk about it. And it wasn't 
really until kind of my generation, the baby baby boomers, that we started saying, oh, my leg hurts <laughs> or my, you know, I don't feel so good. And, you know, we started talking about things and sharing things and then started to find out that some of these health issues that we have, our parents had them, but we just didn't know about it. Our aunts had them, our you know, our cousins had them, and we just didn't know about it because we didn't talk about it. Now we talk about health issues. So I think that also probably really plays a key role in they didn't own it. They didn't talk about it. They just kept on, kept keeping on, you know, doing everything and, and taking care of everything. And so we came along and did the same, but we did more because we were – um, not only working outside of the home, we were also trying to obtain an education and yeah. raise a family working outside of the home. So, you know, we, we just tried to do it all. And, and therefore, not only our physical health suffers, but our mental health suffers as well. Absolutely. And I mm-hmm. think also, um, I think with with that, the the consistent support of um, family and friends mm-hmm. isn't always ex- doesn't always exist anymore in the same capacity, right? right? So you know yeah. the person that you could rely on to babysit your children, or the person that you could mm-hmm. go and have a cup of tea with, and the, you know, um, and and share with mm-hmm. everyone is so busy, right? Mm-hmm. So even if you mm-hmm. have a support system, they're not really relieving any of the duties on your plate. You know what I mean? Right. And I think that's right. like a, the, the difference too is that we, we're, we're not in that, that village where you're getting that extra mm-hmm. support. Um, the village is there, but it's more of where we're still giving to the village rather than having the support from the village. Mm-hmm. And I think that now, once again, when you say that, I think you start thinking about the generations and, you know, um, the 50 plus, I think are more supportive and they do reach out and they're, they're, they're more there. But when I look at the, you know, 40 down, they're not as um, uh, helpful to each right. other is, you know, like my generation, me and my friends, you know, they, they drop everything <laughs> and come to the rescue. Um, and that's coast to coast right. where I see my daughter's generation. She just turned 38. They're not like that. Right. And yeah. I think even if they, I mean, they love, like I'm, I'm in my four, mm-hmm. early forties and my sister circle, they're wonderful powerful mm-hmm. women who are trying mm-hmm. to do the same thing that were, you know, trying to, you know, obtain the American dream, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, we're still in, a lot of us are, you know, pursuing, you know, deg- master's or doctorate degrees. We're mm-hmm. working professional careers. We have our children. So, you know, mm-hmm. even if we're like, can we find time to, mm-hmm. you know, to sit down and see each other face to face? Can we mm-hmm. take a girls weekend? Can we, you know, mm-hmm. even planning that um, is mm-hmm. difficult, let alone like, you know, can you pick up my kids from school on the way mm-hmm. of you picking up your three kids from school? Like, are we going to be, the, you know, can we work that out? It's almost, you know, and, this, it's not even possible because everyone's schedule well, is so tight. So I think that's another component of it is that the relationships with, you know, with social media, mm-hmm. with, you know, those mm-hmm. virtual connections can also stop us from being that day-to-day help. And so once again, when you say that, it gets my mind going because, you know, you being, you know, 40 and me being, you know, almost 60, I don't have babies. I don't, me and my girlfriends, we don't have little kids. We've got our degrees. We're we're either retired or trying to retire. And so we do have more time. We're grandparents. So we're helping to pick up the grandkids and do this and do that, you know, Plus, we're still working or, you know, and so now we're on the other side of it and we see more of the importance of girlfriend time, um, planning trips. I mean, I already have three trips planned this summer with girlfriends and they're different. (laughs) See, these are different categories of girlfriends. And so um, because I have a BFF that we've been best friends for almost 50 years. We do a trip every year, just her and I. 
and that's, awesome. that's rain or shine. And it don't matter if she just come to my house and we stay at my house for the whole week or her house, you know, whatever, we just make it work for us. Um, so I think you're right. That's the difference because you guys are still trying to pursue different degrees and, you know, we're not. We're done. Right. We're trying to get where you mm-hmm. are. Right? Exactly. <laughs> right. We're trying to stay healthy enough and figure out, you know, right. if we get one girl chip in for the, for the you know, every right. year, we're like, oh, my gosh, we are winning, you know. We right. did that. And our kids are like, where are you going, Mommy? You're going with right. us. We're like, oh, yes, we're going without you. You will be okay. I promise. You know? <laughs> we're still at that, at that place. And I think because some of us, you know, may have started having families a little later, you know, that, that right. time is going a little bit longer <laughs> than mm-hmm, maybe mm-hmm. Um, others. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think you're right. But yeah. you're, what you're saying, those three three trips a, a year, that is definitely a goal. Put that on my vision board. <laughs> absolutely. You're going to get there, girl. You're going to get there. I promise you. Amen. I receive it. <laughs> so, but ladies, as, as professionals and as, as moms, so Veronica, you said, you know, you're a grandma as well, but, you know, you were a mom. At what point in time uh-huh. did you did you start to realize the importance of self-care? Um, I still think I'm trying to learn the importance of it, um, but I, I also, um, and, and, and if I start going off a little bit, stop me, but I just recently had surgery, and I felt like um, it was divine intervention because I needed to go, you know, to the doctor to take care of, you know, some things, and I had not. And I fell one day, and I won't go through the whole story, but it led me to go, you know, get checked out. So I went to my doctor's instead of urgent care. And while we were there, I said, you know, started telling her about my feet and that my feet doctor wouldn't see me anymore because they think that, you know, my feet issues are um, something else because they've done everything they can. And so, um, and that had been like, four months ago. So I've been kind of going without the care I need for four months. And so she said, well, let me, you know, send you for an MRI on your back. And she did, went, took it. They were like, "Mm, we see something on your left ovary. Okay, a mass, which led from one thing to another. Come to find out, I had a cyst on my left ovary, almost six, almost seven centimeters. And so they were like, okay, you know, we need to get the, you know, get those out, blah, blah, blah. But I say that to say, had I not fallen, I wouldn't have probably gone for a while and gotten this taken care of. And I often feel like God is always telling me to be still. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I don't. And so it's like, okay, you won't be still. Well, I'm going I'm to make you be still. And so for two, almost two weeks now, it's been like a week and a half, I've had to be still. And it's at the point that I'm ready to pull my hair out because I'm not used to being still. And everybody's like, oh, my God, I know this is killing you because you're never home. You're always gone. And so I, so I say that to say I still don't. But then there is a point that I do say, okay, I can identify when it's time for me to get off the spinning wheel and say, I need some time myself or I need some girlfriend time, you know, and to heck with everything else because I'm still very active. My daughter and my grandson still live with me. And so, you know, it's like I'm kind of grandma, mom, you know, a <laughs> little bit of everything. And so, um, I, I'm, but I'm more conscious about it but I'm still not good at it. So you're a work in progress, it sounds like. Yes, I always say that. <laughs> so I, think, I think that's an important mantra, right, that, you know, we don't need to be perfect. But, but do, you, do you all ever feel that, you know, with that sense of, you know, wearing that mom, I'll say that mom, um, that mom cape, does perfection mm-hmm play a role or has it played a role for you being a mom professional trying to do everything 
Well, I think a lot of us um, suffer from, like, super mom syndrome, right, where we're mm-hmm. constantly, we, we think that we have to, you know, cut the sandwich, mostly when we're, kids are small, like, cut the sandwich just so, you know, or um, they have to go to this particular school or else. They have to get mm-hmm. this type of extra support or else. Um, and I think that we put mm-hmm. a lot of unnecessary pressure on ourselves um, mm-hmm. because we have this, picture in our mind how it's supposed to be, mm-hmm. how your car mm-hmm. is supposed to look, you know, how your mm-hmm. how their how the clothes are supposed to be folded after they come out the dryer. How you know, and I think um, you know, how your children are supposed to develop. And I think that when we and how we're gonna make it all happen and within that twenty four hour period in a day. And I think that that becomes sometimes our biggest um, our biggest cross because we mm-hmm. we are, it's self it's self imposed it's society as well but it's mostly mm-hmm. self it's also self imposed mm-hmm. and when you get it comfortable mm-hmm. you know when you say you know what it, it, kids don't come with a manual um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna love this child in there and all of my craziness, whatever that might be, and all mm-hmm. their crazes, whatever they come with, and we're going we're gonna to love it out, we're going to figure this thing out, and we're going to move and mm-hmm. enjoy life. And I think a mm-hmm. lot of us end up not enjoying motherhood as much as we can, mm-hmm. or we could, because we're so busy trying to make these, you know, these unnecessary checklists mm-hmm. in our minds, mm-hmm. um, rather than being able to enjoy and just savor the fact mm-hmm. that our kids are growing, and then one day they'll be adults. And so I think that superwoman syndrome really, or that Wonder Woman or Superman syndrome, really gets in the way oftentimes of just being authentic and being real mm-hmm. and being forgiving of when we um, fall short of what our expectations mm-hmm. might be. And um, I sat on a parent panel recently for um, children, for uh, parents of children with autism, and the first thing I told them was, like, forgive yourself, you know, mm-hmm. if, you know if you didn't, catch everything, you know, when they were 18 months, you know, forgive yourself if, if you didn't um, know that that was the right uh, level of early intervention that you needed. And I think sometimes mm-hmm. when we are, you know, we're, when we, you know, we have hindsight, you know, it's always 2020, we're like, oh, if I knew I would have, but we have to mm-hmm. learn to allow ourselves to be authentically who we are and enjoy and love and give our mm-hmm. kids that first opposed mm-hmm. to putting that arbitrary checklist together all the time that um, right. stresses the kids out as well as ourselves. Mm-hmm. I, it's funny because I watch that with my daughter, and sometimes I just want to say, go give it to me here. Let, get, come on, let's just get this done, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, it, if she goes in the kitchen to make my grandson an egg, it probably takes about 20 minutes. If I go in there making the egg, it takes five <laughs> because – I'm not I'm not into the perfection anymore. Right. Those things are less important to me. It's like, okay, come on, let's get it done. And um, where, yeah, there was a time that, you know, you want it to be a certain way. Um, I can fold towels really quick, and they still look nice. You know, it doesn't take me all, all day. Um, right. Where, you know, I watch my daughter, and she's more trying to be, you know, that m- more meticulous about it. And so I find myself, you know, wanting to be like, girl, come on, it ain't that serious. It ain't got to be all perfect. It ain't got to be that. And then, you know, like decorations for the birthday party and, you know, invitations to the birthday party. I'm like, girl, bye. That's just, you do you doing too much. <laughs> right. And all that is so, and, and that's all the stress that we're carrying around. Right. And, and, you know, and, and, and it, it makes us, and it makes us sick. I mean, it makes mm-hmm. us sick. And then we also give people the, an invitation to criticize and really, you know, right. because we're, because we're self-deprecating, which then allows people mm-hmm. to say, yep, those invitations were just okay. You know, I thought you would have gold right. lay on them or something. You're like, I right. know I thought I would do. I didn't, I know I want to do five pinatas. I only did one, you know, or I thought they'll do the, you know, and I think that that's kind of like, the problem, mm-hmm. too, is that when we're so hard on ourselves and we can't forgive ourselves, we give people a license to then be critical right. of us as well. And I think that right. also affects, you know, who we are as mothers. Right, yeah. Because I think, um, yeah, my generation more now, we care less. You know, well, I'll go, I don't care what somebody thinks. I don't, you know, 
um, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect or, you know, even, um, you know, my girlfriends give me permission to be less perfect. And, you know, um, so, yeah, I just think that, yeah, it really has a lot to do with generational um, um, and experience time, you know, uh, you know, when you've had, you know, experiences, you can see where you've made your mistakes and you can see, you know, where your children are, um, you know, making some mistakes. And although you want them to, you know, be able to do their own thing because you see it coming head first, it's kind of hard. You want to jump in, but then sometimes it's like playing double Dutch. You know, you're like, okay, should I jump it down? Now maybe I better should wait a minute. Let me hold up. And I, yeah, well, but it's affecting this and it, and it's going to affect that. And, you know, so it's a um, fine line of, you know, kind of when to jump in and, um, you know, put your two cents in and when not to. So, yeah, I, I, I think, that um, it is a lot of generational um, differences. I was saying I also think that it has a lot to do with um, the way we carry our spiritual life as well. Mm -hmm. I think that um, younger, a lot of younger folks have a hard time understanding that they don't have to do all of it on their own. They don't have a spiritual practice that's consistent. You know, I think when you look at older generations, they had a consistent structure around faith and community. And I think mm-hmm. that a lot of young people um, don't have that and haven't, like, developed that same level of um, structure, accountability, and support around their, their, um, their faith walk. And I think that also means that you feel like you're doing so much of it alone, right? So if I make a decision, it's Nicole making that decision. And if it's wrong, it's Nicole that's going to have to fix it. And I think that is where you also get a lot of the anxiety and the stress that younger moms feel is because they feel they're doing it alone rather than having the um, spiritual, the the community and the spiritual support that comes from being a part of a religious um, community. That they feel they have to do it alone or that um, they want to do it alone? I just think think that sometimes... As you get older, you might say, you know, God or, you know, whoever you may call your, um, Mm -hmm, you know, your mm -hmm. creator, you'll say, you know, Mm -hmm. I can give this to you because I'm confident that you're with me, that there's Mm an extra level of support that I'm walking with, that you're walking with me. So even Mm -hmm. in this journey as a mother, and even if I make mistakes, or even if I should have been a helicopter when I was hands off, you're still there ordering, providing right, um, mm-hmm. healing, restoring, and I can walk confidently knowing that I'm not alone in this process in right. a spiritual way. And I think that right. for some, some younger, some mothers, when you don't have that component, it's, you, you increase your anxiety in a sense because you don't have mm-hmm. that, that extra support. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So over time, how did how did you all find your support networks? Because it sounds like you know, and, and speaking to Nicole, you know, prior to the to the podcast, I think she had like a great um, like a great saying. Um, her every you know every woman should have a board of directors, right? Or she should have a board of directors. So <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe, I'm definitely paraphrasing Nicole, but if you could if you could speak to that, Nicole and how how do you how would you how have you done it yourself? or maybe in the process of doing it, and, you know, what would be some suggestion for other moms to sort of have, you know, mm-hmm. develop that sister circle um, like, you, like you all have or that board of directors? Right. So I, I think that a board of directors is important for every corporation, right? And I think mm-hmm. that we have to look at ourselves as an entity just like a corporation. And, um, you know, and so for me, um, when I think about my personal board of directors, I think of those people who will hold me accountable but also will give me the level of support that I need um, in day-to-day. So it might be a professional um, person, uh, a person who I can think of as a mentor um, that mm-hmm. will help me to steer uh, my career path. 
But also, when it comes to motherhood, I also think it might be um, an, a, a sage person in the community who just gets it. You know, maybe it's an, a mother-in-law, maybe it's a, a uh, aunt, maybe it's a, a, a family friend, but who's always kind of been there to kind of say, you know what, you got this, you're doing great, your kids mm-hmm. are wonderful, mm-hmm. and it can offer that level of support that you need and that encouragement that you need. Um, the other one is just, again, um, as Veronica was saying, the need for a sister circle. It doesn't have to be a lot. You don't need, you know, 15 mm-hmm. great friends. You just need one or two, you know, um, people who you know you can call in the midnight night hour and say, oh, my goodness, and they'll answer the phone um, and help you uh, create a plan and that they'll mm-hmm. speak life to you. You know, you don't need the friend who's mm-hmm. going to say, you know, and your board director, you don't put the person who's the, the, the Debbie Downer and the naysayer who makes mm-hmm. you feel like you're having a Job desert experience every time you have a, right. a mild crisis. <laughs> you know, you put the person who can give you some perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're on mm-hmm. the on the on the edge of the cliff, the edge, and uh-huh. so you you know you create those you know you cre- you create that, and it changes in time with time. Mm-hmm. The person who might yeah. be on your board of directors when your kids are you know are in are infants or toddlers may not be on your board of directors when they're in their tweens, and you're now um, you know doing travel volleyball or travel basketball, and you have a whole new skill set that you have to figure out. Um, you know, now you go so, to church, girl. You going to church? Uh, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> yeah. So you just have to, you know, so you have to be willing to be flexible mm-hmm. with this board, just like a, like a corporation is, right? If there's a new direction that they have to turn in, they they mm-hmm. they, they change their board members. You know, mm-hmm. and I think that each iteration in, in your life, there's different people that you need to bring on. Some people might be consistent. You know, they just ride mm-hmm. with you. you. Just they just know you from mm-hmm. you know from the cradle. They just know that you're this, mm-hmm. this is who mm-hmm. you are at your core, and you just know mm-hmm. that they no matter what goes on in, in your life, they'll be there for you. But there's some people who are this there for a reason, a season, right. or a lifetime. You know, yeah. so the board of directors I think is really important in a in a uh, professional way and also in a personal way. Man, I love that phrase, uh, you know, about a board of director. But, you know, you're so absolutely right. Um, everyone can't be on the front pew all the time and in every situation. Um, you have to know who your friends are, who you can go to when you need certain things. And there's certain friends that um, I know that um, – I can call when I need this or when I need that. Um, and then I have that one, it doesn't matter what, I can call or whatever. And she's the one, I mean, she'll call me and she'll say, you know, you are on my mind. And I'm like, girl, I should have been, run- you should be tired because I was running through your mind. I know I was because <laughs> I was going through something. And she, I think I really have a spiritual connection to her um, and more and more me to her versus her to me. Um, and I remember one time God just placed it on my heart and we had met for dinner and she came in, and she always just comes in and starts talking. I'm like, okay, I need you to just chill for a minute because I just need to say this. Because if anything ever happened to me, I would want you to know this. And I said, thank you for loving me for who I am. Not trying to change me, not trying to say, you know, you should be this or you should do that, blah, blah, blah. But just loving me for who I am. And she, you know, when I, she was like, you know what, well, your mom, no, 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 no. Just, you take this because this is for you. This is, if I left here today, this is what I would want you to know is you love me for who I am. You never tried to change me. And so you have to, you know, and, and I, and I, I always, when I talk to a lot of young girls, You know, I find that they don't have some of the close relationships that, you know, me and my girlfriends have had back in the day. And um, and it's kind of sad. And so it's, you know, my hope and dream for all young women to be able to find that the the people that are going to be in their amen corner because you need them. 
You know, you can have all the faith in the world, but we're human and we're going to have doubts. And we need to have people that can reassure us that, you know, everything's going to be okay and go back to what you know, that God is going to take care of you. And, you know, you stay prayerful because, you know, we're humans and we get weak and we sometimes start, like they say, if you're going to, um, 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 uh, what's this? If you're going to pray, don't worry. If you're going to worry, don't pray. <laughs> you know, vice versa. If you're going to worry, don't pray. If you're going to worry, you know, if you're going to pray, don't worry. And, but people have to remind us of that. And, um, yeah, I just really, um, agree with you, Nicole, that, um, you've got to have that, uh, board of directors. I like that. <laughs> so for this Mother's Day, what do you all, looking forward to celebrating about being a mother, being a, being a woman? I, I just, I think I don't take for granted as like a single day that I'm a mom. Um, I think, I think that just the idea of um, being a mom is a blessing. There's so many women who, um, who want to have that experience, who may not have that experience. And I think that's, you know, I think oftentimes we forget, you know, that it is a, a privilege um, to be a mom and a blessing and a charge. So I enjoy, so this, I, I enjoy mothers, being a mother every day. But on Mother's Day sometimes, I mean, there have been Mother's Days where I'm like, look, I have two sons. And Mother's Day will come, and I'm like, okay, the day before Mother's Day, we go to our favorite, their, quote, unquote, our favorite diner and that's the day before <laughs> mother's day and on mother's day mommy's not home <laughs> mommy right, is going right. to take a self-care day you know mommy's going to uh you know find a find a sister friend and go to the spa with you know um i think i've i've kind of figured that mother's day is mm-hmm. about me and so mm-hmm. um celebrating it you know you know in a way that is authentic to what i feel i need at that time is really important and I think that's something that, you know, so oftentimes we feel guilted into doing, like, a Mother's Day routine that we're like, you know what, that's really stressful, and that's not really making me feel mm-hmm. very happy. So um, my my husband and, and kids have been really, so we do Saturday um, at the diner, and then Sunday we'll go to church, and then after that I kind of, you know, play it by year, depending on how I feel about that day. If I need a self-care day, if I feel like getting together and having a Mother's Day celebration with, you know, our families, whatever it looks like. But it's definitely something that I try not to um, have, in, like, the, the activities imposed on me. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I look at that like Christmas when parents have to um are separated in the and their kids um they don't get their kids you know one gets the kids one christmas and the other gets the other another the other christmas and and parents have such a hard time and i said well christmas is whatever day you choose to celebrate it so it's mm-hmm. funny when you say that that made me think about that um for me um right now uh, mother's day isn't so much about me um, it's about my mother, and I, I have so many friends who no longer have their mothers, and I, I often think about that. But I had vowed, um, especially when I moved um, away from home out of the state of Michigan, that I would never let a mother's day go by without being with my mother. And um, um, and we always go, you know, to church. I go to I go to her church, and then you know we go to dinner or you know whatever. But I I always make sure that I am home for Mother's Day or have her here with me for Mother's Day, um, and that's the sacrifice kind of that I'm willing to give up for it to be about her. And I get some benefits, but it's more about her. And one day it will be about me, but that's what makes her happy. She enjoys that. So I make that sacrifice. And through the grace of God, um, you know, I just had this surgery. So I had made plans to go home. One of my good uh, friends from high school sent out a text and she works for Delta Airlines. She's like, hey, I got some buddy passes that are getting ready to expire 
who knows, you know, has a, has a plan, knows, you know, where they're going, blah, blah, blah. I was like, me, me, me. So I will be flying to Michigan on Friday and flying back on Monday oh, to be with awesome. my mom. That's yes. Wonderful. Well, ladies, this yeah. has been a, been a wonderful conversation, and I think you've given such – I think you're such an inspiration to other moms. I mean, for me, I definitely wanted to have you on because I, I know both of you, you know, personally, you all work in the community and you give back um, as well as professionally and as well as being mothers. And thank you so much for sharing um, your thoughts and reflections on um, on being a mother and, and the support needed for a mother and just kind of giving that full spectrum of, what it really is like to be a mom and for joining me today. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you us. so happy, much. Happy Mother's yeah. Day to you yeah. as well. Thank you so much. Um, you know, it's always good to be able to share because I think sharing with each other just helps us, you know, be better. And so I appreciate you um, asking me to be on this podcast. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you for listening to What is Black Podcast. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. And if you are if you have Apple Podcasts, please remember to subscribe, rate, and review us. And tell a friend. Until next time.